Wow. Are we ready? Yeah. We are ready? Really busy here. Um, so for my talk, first a short disclaimer. This is not a technical topic. Okay, no one's leaving. <laughs> um, <laughs> compared to the other topics we had before, really. Um, but before I start off with the talk, I would like to say thank you for Javier for another round this year of organizing the staff room. <laughs> and to all the other people like the guy uh, at the camera. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, today I would like to talk to you about Fritzing. Is anyone here who has not heard about Fritzing before? Oh, great. I thought, okay, I asked this question this round because it's probably this way. Okay. Um, I talk about Fritzing not because I maintain Fritzing. Actually, I have not a lot to do with Fritzing. But what's my, what my company has to do with Fritzing is that we provide the Fritzing fab. And this is really important because I can only give advices. I do not own the brand. I do not own the code. I, Oh, nothing. What I just do is to provide the Fritzing fab. So please keep this in mind. I can only give advices through this talk. Um, everything else is up to the Fritzing. This is to be discussed later who is actually on Fritzing. But first, I would like to give a short introduction on Fritzing and um, what it actually is. Because you may ask yourself, okay, it is something to draw PCBs to do technical sketches on electronics, but how is it like compared to, let's say, KiCad? There's a huge difference. This is from the Fritzing Wikipedia page, and what you notice is that Fritzing is not intended to be used by electrical engineers. That's a major difference. It is used for designers, artists, we just want to have a few LEDs blink on their shirt, something like this. These are people which start off with an Arduino, then hook up some LEDs to the Arduino and continue to grow. But because of this, I believe that an application like Fritzing is great for KiCad 2 because a Fritzing user later in the process, maybe two years later, will head over to KiCad. But this is a process. They start off with fritzing, do their sketches, do their totally weird PCBs with some strange routing, doesn't matter. It's totally fine. Because of this, fritzing has this unique breadboard view. So most of you just say, okay, well, what crap is this? I can do my routing with this. I just do a thematic. <laughs> but for, let's say, artists, this is a great way to have something really already working on your table and then bring this what you have on your table over to a schematic. And this is a visual way to do such. And from this breadboard view, you can go over to doing a PCB layout um, to what's said here, a more permanent circuit. So compared to KiCad, Fritzing is more like, oh, I already have something which is actually working on my desk. Now I want to professionalize it. That's a little bit different compared to other traditional EDA tools. So um, fritzing is widely used. How did that happen? One of the reasons is that whenever you open a book from, let's say, O'Reilly, and look for all the sketches within this book, when it's about electronics, of course, they are mostly made by fritzing because people like this visual breadboard view to just see, okay, they can imagine that is something I can build on my own. That's why it's so popular in books, lectures, um, education, also with pupils. So for really basic electronics. But with everyone who does basic electronic, maybe later get someone who does professional electronics. And so the result is that right now, Fritzing is used by 200,000 200, people. 
So this is not like the last 10 years. This is right now. So it, there is some tracking within Fritzing, so we know that this is true. Um, but so far, mm -hmm. so good. Um, now it gets a little bit more interesting because Fritzing has a lot of open source applications has a problem. It's not able to find developers, maintainers and such. Um, how do I know? This probably is the indicators you see at a lot of open source projects. Open issues, open pull requests, um, latest release three, three years ago. Okay, two years, let's say two years. Um, the project has died. Actually not because a lot of people use it, but there's no development ongoing. So the, there is just you know, evidence that there is any development. Um, so I asked myself, well, how could that happen? And the first thing was, maybe is there any money missing to pay a maintainer to really care about this project? So let's see how the Fritzing open source project earns any money to sustain or sustain a new development and to fund the development. How does that work? On the one side, we have prototype manufacturers. These are PCB fabs and EMS services, which do PCBs, assembly and such, such as we do. And we give 10% give of every Fritzing sketch which gets paid through us back to Fritzing. And this is enough to pay like half a developer. And the other thing is partner IC manufacturers. So whenever you would like to have a part from your company within Fritzing, within the library, um, there are part manufacturers which pay Fritzing to have their parts in the library. This, for example, happened with or happens with SparkFun. SparkFun has all these tiny uh, breakout boards, and SparkFun pays Fritzing for this. Uh, I have no clue about the amount, but there is obviously something going on. So, money is not an issue here. What is it then? Um, oh. This is not, just not a slide how this integration into the FAB looks like. So the user always has the independence to decide where to manufacture the PCB on the upper. Uh, and we have just a Gerber export. But if you hit the fabricate button, you're directly redirected um, to the Fritzing FAB. What I, during the investigation, noticed is that there is a flaw in the legal structure of Fritzing. And what is, for me, really important is that something like this does not happen to, let's say, KiCad. So what happened here? On the left, we have the Fritzing UG, which is a German limited liability company. And on the right is the Friends of Fritzing, which is a, which is a public association. All the money goes into the limited liability company. But there is, or I don't know about any connection between, between these both parties. And all the developers and everything's going on here, but here is no money, no funding at all. And on this side, I have no clue about this. So maybe, maybe strippers and hookers, no idea. Um, <laughs> And this is something which somehow have, has to be changed. I have no clue on how to change this, but this is the situation right now, which is like a dead end for an open source application. Because the right for the Fritzing brand is here, but all the money is over here. <laughs> so um, we ask ourselves, um, what to do next. And I'm really passionate about this. First, because um, my company provides a Fritzing fab, but more because I believe an application like Fritzing is really 
necessary for an ongoing stream of new electrical engineers to get young people interested in this thinkering around, because this is what Fritzing really is good for. Um, so one idea which came to my mind is maybe we could do a fork, but I am really afraid of forks. So it, this is something like what happened with Open Office and Libre, uh, Libre Office. And when I asked my mom, um, please download, um, la download some open source software, uh, open office software, she will probably look for open office because she knows open office. So it's in the people's mind. They don't think about LibreOffice. Maybe everyone here around thinks about LibreOffice because we had FastM, obviously. Uh, but all the other people in the world think, okay, it's open office. And they don't care that it is owned by Oracle. So this is the same with Fritzing. Um, if we would start a fork of Fritzing, everyone would just continue to use the former Fritzing. Um, and there would be, we would have to come up with a new name, and I think the name is really great, so I do not want to come up with a new name. Um, so this, personally, for me, is not an option here. Another idea would be that I believe maybe it's just necessary to have a maintainer for Fritzing, um, which I can't be, because that would take the independence out of Fritzing. I do not want to do that. Um, but what I, or respective Eisler, would do is to just pay half time of a maintainer, because I believe with a maintainer there are developers out there which work for Fritzing, but they are disappointed by how the project is lead right now. So I believe with a maintainer which is really passionate about Fritzing and with some support from our side, they could get some traction into this project because then all the developers, and there are a few uh, out there, would start working on Fritzing again. That is what I believe. Um, but totally forget that. Um, this, this guy also would have to talk to the original Fritzing team, which is, that's what I can tell, kind of hard. <laughs> um, but at least maybe give it a try. So this is open for discussion. Uh, later after FOSDEM, I will open up an issue on the Fritzing GitHub repository with a link to the recording of uh, this talk to give everyone a short idea on what the current situation is, um, because I do not want to decide it on my own. We as a company do not want to decide this on us. Um, so it is a question to the community also to find someone who feels responsible for this. And I believe for such a great project, there are people who would love to maintain this project. Thank you. So the question is if the reason for um, the stall is that of the users are not enough developers or out of the users are not enough developers, correctly? Okay, uh, this is an issue I see with a lot of projects in this electronic sector because um, users are not developers here. So especially for Fritzing, these are really beginners, there are no software engineers with this, or only a small fraction. Yes, this is an issue here. Please. Sorry, it wasn't clear to me. Who owns the trademark for this? So the, the trademark is owned by the, um, by the public association, but um, that's it. It's just a trademark. Does, does that answer your question? 
It, it, it's, just, it's German. It's a German public association. It's a German company. It's. Okay. Was the question. Oh, sorry, Probably this uh, Verein should have a yearly come together and decide. Yes, um, so the question is um, there is this public association which is democratic, so there are people which could come together to make a decision. But the issue is they can't make a decision because they don't just own the brand, not everything. So it's so fragmented that there is no party which could actually decide for just the whole project. Another question over here, please. Who is hosting the website of this thing? If I, don't, if I understand correctly, it's also a web app. Like where is that um, Fritzing itself is a desktop application. Uh, so the question was, thank you, Javier. Um, who is hosting the website? That's what it said. It's so fragmented. The website is hosted by the um, limited liability company. And the application itself is um, QUT with C++, obviously. Uh, so you can always download it. Um, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure uh, why are you afraid of a fork? <laughs> because uh, it hasn't been updated in three years, so it's probably going to take one or two years until the binaries won't work. So, and you make a new project called Fritz, and it will be the one that is working, it will be like no problem. Um, so, why am I afraid of a fork? Because in two or three years, the binaries will just stop working and then everyone moves to the fork. Yes, maybe, but also maybe the company will just fix the binary that it starts working again. Then you have another six years of runtime. Um, so that could be an option. And the thing is, most users are totally happy with fritzing how it works today. So even so, there are 1,000 issues open. Most users are just satisfied with this. So um, for, for, the, for the company behind uh, Fritzing, it would be a simple to task to just keep it somehow working. But that's not what I see for an open source project. I want to see some involvement. Another question here, up over there. <laughs> so, so <laughs> to, to, to repeat for the audience on the record, um, the question was, why don't we just ask CERN? Because um, there is up to discussion, uh, KiCad was in the same situation. Um, why not? Um, <laughs> but then, please, someone from CERN uh, come to me. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I will see the LHC electronics done with spritzing. <laughs> okay, another. Uh, do we have time for another question? Xavier? Do, uh, please. Actually, you've answered half of this already. Um, I was asking, actually, from those issues, how many people are actually having real problems? Or is it just good enough for people? So those issues, how many are duplicates or requests for new features? Or do you actually have, a st have statistics about what people are having problems with? Mm -hmm. So the question is, out of these 1,000 issues, uh, how many are really important or are people just satisfied with what Fritzing does? Yes, most people are satisfied with what Fritzing does. And I can't tell you how many of these issues are real bugs or how many are feature requests because it's not properly sorted. Uh, what I would do as a maintainer, honestly, is to take it over and just close all of the issues. <laughs> just, just, just fucking throw them away and start off from scratch. Because then you can, uh, no, 
really, no one would scope through these 1,000 issues. I think, you know, from your day jobs that when you have a bug tracking with 1,000 open issues, you just say, okay, this issue is fucking six years old. Uh, no one really cares about this. Um, but this is up to the maintainer. Um, and I believe there must be some maintainer behind it with this pragmatic um, decision making here. One last question. Uh, my question is, <coughs> uh, wouldn't it be a good uh, course of action to make sure that the flow of money to these companies is getting reduced um, until they maybe uh, start behaving a little bit more cooperative? Um, I mean, they don't need to be thrown out completely. If they start acting uh, in favor of this thing, they could be a part of this new process. But I think the first step is to make clear that uh, all the money is going into the uh, buying. Mm -hmm. uh, in the switching in developers mostly, and then maybe they will start thinking about how to cooperate a little bit more. I believe that this company does not really care about fritzing. That, that's my own opinion. Care about the money, maybe. maybe? Uh, oh, I should repeat the question. So uh, there is money flowing to this company. Why don't we just close the valve and drain that company? Um, I say no, uh, I don't believe that that, that would help um, because this company just don't care. So if there is money coming in, that's fine. If not, well, it's dead. That, that, that's my impression of this, but um, I hope that someone will, uh, when we start off talking on GitHub, to just interact and maybe give some clear idea on this. Okay. We, um, the question is, have we tried to contact not the public association, but the limited liability company? Uh, we are in contact with them. We have to, because we are the Fritzing Fab and somehow have a relation with them. Um, but what I can tell is that it is really, really difficult to discuss with them. Um, maybe because there is not a lot of interest to further develop it? I, I have no clue. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Patrick, again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>